Hey everyone and welcome back to another video. Today we'll be taking a look at updating our rooted Pixel 2 or Pixel 2 XL to the latest beta of Android Q. So right now we're just on the first one here, but we're going to be upgrading from Pi to Android Q whilst keeping root by flashing Magis Canary. So let's head over to the downloads and check out what we need to do here. So first things first is that you'll need to make sure you have the latest version of the SDK platform tools. Now this is quite obvious as you would know if you've watched my videos before, but you want to keep this up to date all the time and as quickly as possible as well. Uh, just to minimize any confusion or any issues when it comes to flashing things in fastboot especially. Uh, so remember your training, okay? If things don't work out, just double check that you got the latest version of the SDK platform tools. And it's also not exactly practical to scroll down up to the revisions header and to see that the latest version is 28.0.1, but then there's actually 28.0.2. Those with the Android SDK manager with Android Studio would know this, but there's actually a newer version than the one that is written down here. So sometimes these things happen. So when you do run into an issue, just go ahead and download the latest version here for your operating system. If you're on Linux or Mac, uh, you might want to download, or sorry, use your package manager to do so. But on Windows, we're just going to be downloading the latest platform tools here. And that'll also give you a version here as well. So you can see that's 28.0.2 and just save that somewhere uh, in an Android folder just so we can keep everything organized. And the next thing you want to download after downloading the latest platform tools is the latest Android Q factory image. Now if you scroll down here we can see the downloads for the Pixel 2 and Pixel 2 XL. So just click on the one that is right for you. I have a Pixel 2 and you need to read and agree with the terms and conditions and click on this blue download button. Just save everything into the same folder as well. And to reroute our phone, we're going to also want to make sure we have the latest version of TWRP. Uh, yours will look like this, and I'll have both links to the Pixel 2 and 2XL TWRP pages. And click on the, one of the download links here, say the Americas or Europe if you're closer to Europe. And down here, you'll want to either download just the TWRP image or download the image and the installer. Now you only need to download the installer if you plan on installing TWRP on a more permanent basis. Although if you do um, replace the boot image, it will erase TWRP because they moved the recovery partition into the boot partition a couple of pixels ago. Uh, but anyways, if you don't want to install TWRP, you don't have to, but you must at least download the TWRP image if you want to flash Magisk. Of course, there is another way to install Magisk, but uh, we won't be going over that in this video. I will leave some information down below if you wish. So just download the zip installer and also the image. So I'm just going to click on the image here and you want to click on this link where it says, please click the link below to start your download. Not the MD5, not the uh, secure hashing algorithm file here and not the PGP signature, just the image. So you can click on that and that'll actually download the TWRP image as you'll see shortly. So save that in the same folder. And if you want to install TWRP, also download the zip as well. And you can save that with everything else as well. So once you have the TWRP downloaded, depending on what you want to do, now you can head over to the Magisk Canary channel, uh, XDA thread. And this is just so you can get the latest bleeding edge builds of Magisk. And this version of Magisk, at least at the time of recording, you can see the version numbers later on in this video, I'll show you that. Uh, this one supports rooting Android Q on the Pixel 1 and Pixel 2, but not the Pixel 3 just yet. I will make a separate video for that, but this is about the Pixel 2 anyways. So what I like to do is click on the release notes and also all canary files down here. So here are the release notes, and you can see this version of Magisk, at least 18.1.2.1, will support um, Android Q and also support system as root devices but I don't think that's exactly related to our Pixel 2 running Q, and that's also fine as well. So just keep note of this version. If it's higher, uh, just read through the thread here, go to the last page and just browse through, uh, see if there are any updates or posts made by Top John Wu. Uh, but anyways, here are the files for the Canary builds here, and you want to click on this one. So sorry, you want to download the Magisk uninstaller because we currently have Magisk installed, and we also want to open up the Magisk release zip file. You can see that both of these are on the same build or version, but I think this one just generates less logs. So 
that's pretty good. Uh, so here is the Magisk uninstaller. You want to download that as well. And I'm just going to save this uh, where we have everything else. So my Android folder, I'm going to download that. And also here, our latest Canary builds. Just click on this download button over here. And then you'll also want to save it in the Magisk, sorry, the Android folder. So here is everything. And I'll just minimize the rest of the stuff. So here we have the Magisk released zip file. So the latest Canary build. Here we have the latest Canary Magisk uninstaller zip file. Here we have the latest platform tools and sure it's 28.0.2 or above. Here we have the latest TWRP image, the latest TWRP installer, and of course the factory image that we need to flash. So the first thing we want to do is extract the platform tools. Now I do have a video on setting this up so you don't have to keep on you know, changing command prompt directories or doing things like that. And you can just run it from any command prompt window, which is what I have set up. Uh, so I'll leave that a link down below as well. But if you don't want to do that, you can just extract the entire platform tools folder just into the Android folder here and just wait for that to extract. And then you can close the zip file. And what you want to do with the platform tools folder that you've just extracted, you want to right click on it and then click on open a new window just so we don't muddle up everything. And we'll just leave that there for a second. And now we're going to open up the factory image. So we want to double click on the factory image here and go inside this folder. Uh, if you are if you have the bigger Pixel 2, you'll just see the other code name, but that's fine. It should be the same folder structure. And within here, you'll want to extract the bootloader image, the image zip file, and the radio image, and just extract those. And this might take a little while, shouldn't take too long. And there we go. And one thing I'd like to point out, uh, when I say the image zip, I don't mean the factory image, which contains these files. So don't get those two confused. And so currently your folder should look a little bit something like this. I know it's very cluttered, but uh, it'll all make sense very soon. So let's head back over to our platform tools folder that we just recently opened up. And you can see all our executables here along with their dynamic link libraries. And what you want to do here is go up to the uh, address bar up here and get rid of that or just highlight it and type in CMD. And that'll open up a command prompt window that's already changed its directory to where we have our platform tools. So when we run something like fastboot double dash version, just to see if we can access it, you can see that it has outputted the version here. It's good that it's on 28.0.2 and you can see where it is actually located. And if we just have a look here, it is well located in F Android platform tools and then F Android platform tools and fastboot.exe. So we know we're running the right program and we also know the version of it, which is very important. So now we can close the platform tools folder and I'll just uh, readjust my screen to make sure everything fits. Okay, so once you have all this set up, we can now go to our phone here uh, because we need to copy over some of these files to our phone and we need to make some preparations as well. So let's head over to our phone here and I'm just going to swipe down and make sure that USB here is now for file transfers. And if we go back to our phone, sorry, our computer, uh, we can see that it's just going to set up our device, but we should see it come up here. And you can go to this PC, it should appear there as well. And we have our internal shared storage. So if I just go back out, you can see our Pixel 2 here, internal shared storage. And right here, we can just copy the Magisk release zip, the Magisk uninstaller zip, as well as the, uh, sorry, the TWRP installer. So we can drag those three and make sure it's to the root of the storage. You can see the little tool tip there and not inside one of these folders by accident. So you should see these three or two files here if you don't want to install TWRP. So you'll have at least the Magisk release and Magisk uninstaller. And also I believe that uh, TWRP can't decrypt the data partition uh, when running Android Q so we're going to go back to our phone and remove our screen lock uh, just so we can save some time and hassle going back into Android after updating. So go ahead and go into your settings here and then you want to go to security and location, find your device security pin lock, enter your existing password and then tap on swipe and remove the device protection there. And now we should be all good to go into the bootloader so we can continue our updating process. So what I like to do is plug my phone in at the bottom and hold the power button and then tap on restart. And as soon as the screen turns black or freezes, I hold the volume down button until our phone boots into the bootloader. 
Now just give this a couple of seconds for it to boot into the bootloader. And there we go. And you can also see that we have our little menu selector here. It doesn't matter what mode or what option you have selected. Some people are saying, oh, I don't have fast boot mode. I'm uh, sorry, download mode, but I'm not in download mode. I'm in the bootloader. I mean, you can say fast boot mode. So it doesn't matter what it says. It usually has um, start. So I'll just leave it at that. Uh, so don't worry about what options you have selected. As long as you're in this general screen, you should be fine. And we'll go ahead and go back to our computer and uh, type in the fastboot devices command. So fastboot space devices, and this will return uh, the serial number of the connected device. And you can compare that with the one on your phone. But if it's the only thing you've plugged in, then it should be your phone, right? And what we can do first up is to flash the new rootloader image. So we can do that by typing in fastboot flash bootloader and leave a space after the word bootloader and drag in the bootloader image right onto the command prompt window like that and hit enter and that'll flash the bootloader to our current slot and once that's done we're going to reboot our phone back into the bootloader so we can do that by typing in fastboot reboot uh, bootloader just spaces in between those words and hit enter and our phone will reboot back into the bootloader. Once it's back in, let's update the radio image or the radio partition, and we can flash that by typing in fastboot flash radio. Leave a space after radio and drag in the radio image onto the command prompt window and hit enter. And that'll do the same thing. And once that's done, let's reboot our phone back into the bootloader again. You can use the up arrow key to go to previous commands. So I'm gonna press it twice and you can see fastboot reboot bootloader, and then I'm going to hit enter and our phone should reboot itself back into the bootloader once again. And once you're in there, let's run our update command. So we can do this by typing in fastboot and two dashes or two hyphens, and then you can type in skip dash, another hyphen, uh, reboot. Leave a space after that, type in the word update, and then leave a space after update and drag in the image zip file. So not the one with factory in it. You can see the word factory there. You just want the image uh, walleye, or I think it's crosshatch. It's probably not crosshatch, but the one that's the image zip and doesn't have factory in it. Drag that into the command prompt window and hit enter. And what that double dash skip dash reboot flag does is that it prevents uh, the bootloader from rebooting into Android as soon as the update command is finished. So right now this will take uh, probably maybe close to a minute. So I will just uh, fast forward this until it's done. Okay, so it's finished here. It took about 50 seconds, which is faster than I expected, but that's all right. I'm always about being fast, okay? So let's head over to uh, booting the TWRP image. So we can do that by typing in, uh, move my mouse here, fast boot, boot, leave a space after boot, and drag in the TWRP image, and hit enter. And our phone should boot into TWRP. Now from here, we shouldn't need our computer anymore unless it's to type more commands if something went wrong. So let's head over to our phone and let's hope that we can boot into TWRP. I have read in the Canary thread, Magis Canary, that it does boot in fact. And um, since we've disabled our screen lock, it shouldn't ask for a data decryption password. And here we have an unmodified system partition. Uh, look, I don't think it really matters, but if you do uh, run into a boot loop or something like that, uh, try it. first uninstall Magisk and then if you do decide to reroute, uh, try flashing the factory image again, just uh, not the factory image, just the image zip file as we just did, and then attempt rerouting if you want to, but then keep the system uh, read only. So I'm going to swipe, swipe to allow modifications, and I'm just going to show an example of flashing the TWRP installer if you want to. You don't have to do this, it's optional. So let's scroll down and flash the TWRP installer. Swipe to confirm flash. Uh, but if you don't want to install TWRP, you can just skip ahead until we flash the Magisk uninstaller. So I'll just fast forward this until the TWRP installs. Okay, so TWRP has finished installing. Uh, let's go back and I'm going to reboot the phone back into the recovery mode. And if you ever get this option to install the TWRP app, I would uncheck both these boxes and then tap on do not install. Um, if you do install this, you'll probably end up in a boot loop but let's let our phone reboot back into TWRP and hopefully it does stick.
Alrighty, so now we're at the main TWRP screen. And from here, we can tap on install. And then it's very important that you uninstall Magisk uh, because you may have some conflicting modules. There may be some, you know, unforeseen issues that arise from upgrading from just a stable or beta to a canary build. And it's just a pretty good practice, in my mind at least, to do so. So here we go. We can uh, go back and then we can tap on Magisk release and flash that. And that'll flash the latest Magisk Canary build on our phone here. And once that is done, uh, and there's nothing else that we can do, uh, we can tap on Reboot System. And then this is where you gotta cross your fingers and hope for the best when your phone turns on. It shouldn't take too long to do so. Usually within 30 seconds to a minute, the phone does turn on all the way into Android. And we should see all our data still remain there. And we'll just be on the Android Q beta program. Okay, so our phone has booted up. That was pretty quick. And here we are, the Android beta program. Hope you guys can see this properly. And here we go. So let's unlock this. No screen lock, remember. And we're just finishing the system update and we have the little Android Q logo here, a temporary one at least. Actually, I think the Pi one is the same as the beta, so maybe they're keeping it. But uh, here we go, let's have a look at the battery saving mode, whoops, which is our system-wide dark mode. That's very cool. And there we go, okay, so I think that's just a Pebble notification that does that. But anyways, let's have a look at Magisk Manager, wherever it is. Okay, so I found out what was wrong. I was running a pretty outdated version of Magisk Manager, or one that wasn't fully working with the Canary builds at least. So um, what I just did was just download it from my phone here, the latest uh, release APK. So whoops, here it is from, just from the same website as the Canary build. So if I just go back a little bit. So here I just went to, you can probably use this one, this top link here, but okay, now it works. But before it didn't work, the download. So I just had to uh, browse to the Canary files and do it that way. But just download the latest version of the Magisk Manager and I believe it's the version code is 199. And you can also go into the settings here, change the update channel from, I think it would be stable or beta, and you should actually get the Canary options as well in here. So I just chose the Canary one, and now let's have a look and see if we can get some root access going here. Let's hit up the terminal and uh, try again. And there we go. So we're rooted here. That's great. So we're rooted and safety net should still pass. I did check it earlier anyways and we're all good. So uh, Google Pay might not work or Pokemon Go or your banking app. I know the Westpac app doesn't work. We learned the hard way today. Uh, but yeah, that's it. If you have any other questions, feel free to leave it down in the comments below. I try my best to kind of uh, bulk reply to these, but if you want a more, uh, a quicker response and uh, to chat with other people who are also interested in all this, feel free to join us on Discord. I'll have a link to that down below. I know it's another messaging application, but uh, a lot of people use it, and maybe you should get your friends on it too. I'm not sponsored it anyway, I just really like using it. Uh, but anyways, yeah, any questions, problems, feel free to let me know down below, or join us on Discord. And, as always, happy flashing!